Shalom, Yashua. I want to give infinite honors to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, by Hashem, and Kakadash. I want to give the honors to our teachers, the apostles of Great Millstone, and salutation to my fellow laborers in Yahweh Shah. Pussy this truth across the four winds of these last days, seconds, and times, making a call and an election sure, laboring for the kingdom of heaven, being that we have to labor into that rest. All right, I came across this clip of. Uh, Thousands and thousands, a multitude of uh, Nigerians breaking into a, a food uh, warehouse because there's a lack of bread in uh, Nigeria. And now hell break loose. And you know us brothers in the know, we know all of these atrocities, uproars amongst the people and calamities that's going throughout the planet Earth. We know that it's going to come here to America last and it's going to be worse. The famine that's coming to America is going to be twice as sore as the famines that are across the planet. Because this is where the bulk of the prophecies are going to be coming to pass. Because America is modern day Babylon, the mother of harlots. All right? And when we read these scriptures, a lot of time we have to extrapolate. All right? Now I'm about to press some of the, pre, play some of this clip. Well, I'm going to play all of it. And I'm going to extrapolate and, you know, Lord willing, as I narrate, I can open your mind up and put yourself in the time of Jacob's trouble when all hell breaks loose. Like, let's let, let's see what's going on right here. This is the government we right, now you for. see thousands of people there. This is the pilot in the right. that we are bringing. And they have no regard for the... They have, these people out there that you see, they have no regard for the princes, the, the judges, the officials, government officials. They like, fuck it. All right, so it's civil unrest. They're breaking the law. They broke into a building, and they don't care what the authorities have to say about it. All right, that's what we read about in the book of Ezra. Okay, all right. Now look, I see thousands and thousands of people. All right, they all over the roof. They're breaking in, and all, any way they can this get is in what there. Is in Job City. Okay, now let's look. When all hell break loose. Now, down there, do you think if they got starving women, starving men, starving children, who's going to get the food? All right? It's going to be the most biggest, strongest, bloodthirsty man. What's a woman down there in a the crowd like that when you have to get it out, get it how you live? When you have to go in there and get what's left? What's a woman in a in um, predicament like that? She's nothing. You see what I'm saying? She's she's spoiled. All right. How can she survive in a in a situation like that where it's, it's, it's hungry men and the men have uh went back into a caveman like a state where there's just survival of the fittest? What can a woman do and survive in an arena like that, in an atmosphere like that? There's nothing she can do. The only thing she can do is be subtle. And when I say be subtle, uh, get on a man, submit on a man, and give her body to a man. Her going in there with brute strength saying, give me bread and water. She going in there to fight for whatever resources they have. She's not going to get nothing. A man's going to slap her, punch her in the shit, kick her to the curve. Okay? Or let's say a man doesn't have any and she's walking out with a bag of food. A man's going to take it from him, all right? The, the law of the jungle is going to be instituted in these last days, all right? Let me get a precept. This is uh, Deuteronomy chapter 20. Now, look at this. 20 you can see the masses. 14. Everybody wants to get food to eat. What's the government? You see, he, he said, look at the masses. Everyone wants, everyone wants to get food to eat. All right, in situations like this, only the strong survive. All right, this Deuteronomy 20 and 14. All right, I'm going to start at verse 13. And when the Lord thy power have delivered it into thine hands, he's talking about when he delivered these heathen lands into thy hands, thou shalt smite every male thereof with the edge of the sword. All right? But the wind, all right, now look, this is a, a, a situation when war happens. All right, the men die. The men fight, all right? And let's see what happens to the women when there's no no man to protect them, okay? Once the men are killed, 
and are out the way. This is what happens to the women and the children. But the women and the little ones and the cattle and all that's in the city, even all the spoil thereof, they become spoil. It don't say that the woman take up arms and she she gets in a lot of her husband and she fights and wins the city back. Man, get the fuck out of here. She becomes spoiled. All right. Once once they have killed the man and they come into the city, the woman can fight all she want. A woman can't do nothing with a man. She could be the biggest, toughest woman in her gene pool. When the smallest, weakest man get in that room. Guess what? He's going to have his way with her. All right. That's the way the most high created men and women. The woman is the weaker vessel. But here in America, they are so. Things are turned upside down and they're so polluted uh, by the philosophies. They really think that they can survive in a. Uh, in a in a. Um, only the strong, only, only the strongest survives the law of the jungle rule reigning. They think they can really survive. They think that independent bullshit will work when all hell break loose. But look what happens. This is a, a situation when you extrapolate when all hell break loose. During a time of war, when a woman doesn't have a man to protect them, the scriptures say that her and the little ones become spoiled. And the scriptures say, shall thou take unto thyself, and thou shalt eat the spoil of thine enemies, which the Lord have given thee. All right? So that occupying, those occupying men, they come and take spoil. They take the booty. All right? They take the women. They take the children. And they have their way with them, man. All right? We're going to be living here in America. We're here in America, Salakia. All right? When all hell break loose and, and there's lack of bread and water, all right, for a woman to get uh, bread and water, the only thing she's going to have to use is her, um, is that funky tail because in that day, she didn't even going to have maxi pads, clean water or soap to keep herself clean, all right? And this is what happened when silver unrest come. The strong survive, even down there amongst the men. Look at these thousands of people. Struggling. People are struggling to have food. All right, now you got to extrapolate, all right? You got people who haven't eaten weeks probably. So let's say a man see another man and this and the man could be strong. And he see another man and he's starving to death. He might get a knife or something, follow the man off somewhere, stab him, and take his shit. All right? You you got me look at this big crowd of all these people down there. You have people down there killing each other for that food, man. You see? You have to, you have to you have to think analytically and critically, all right. These people haven't eaten in weeks, so all right. You get you get the first comers that come in there, they get their shit and they try to leave, all right. All those thousands of people outside, they saying people leave, leave, and then once they hear that they don't got nothing no more, they're gonna look at one of those people that's leaving with some, and then uh, spoiling and overtaking men for their goods is gonna happen. You're gonna have men killing men. For, for what they have in scenarios like that. You have to extrapolate, man. You're going to have men killing one another for uh, bags of uh, flour and rice, so on and so forth. You got people down in that fucking crowd, right? They're killing each other. All right. When, 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 when that melee ends and people scatter from around there, I bet you they had dead bodies down there. That's what happens when famines hit the land and all hell break loose, man. You have people get trampled to death. And women, they could just hang it up. You bitch, you're going to starve to death or, or do some strange for some change. And that's going to be how you're going to become the mire of the streets. Because when all hell break loose, the most high is going to tell you to call on your guards. Call on master. Press 911. See if he deliver you. Get all the people. See what's going on. People just struggling to find what to eat. People struggling to survive. See what the government has done us in He said people are struggling to survive. People turn into animals when they want to survive, man. During the time of famines, people turning to animal. People turning animal to survive. How the motherfuckers be talking? Fucking hell, mites. I. This is Isaiah 
so like in Jeremiah 52 and 6. And in the fourth month and in the ninth day of the month, the famine was sore in the city so that there was no bread for the people of the land. All right. And this was uh, when King Nebuchadnezzar besieged Jerusalem, man. All right. They cut off the supplies, the, su um, the supplies going into the city. And there was a famine. All right. And then the city was broken up. Then all the men of war fled. You see, when, when things like that happen, man, people get the fuck. All right. Men of war uh, leave, leave their posts. All right, man, when you when you are starving to death, man, your mind is not working, clicking on all cylinders. Men of war become, they start attacking one another, eating one another. All right, you have famines. All right. And went about out of the city by night, by the way of the, gate between the two walls which the which was the king which by the king's garden now the chaldeans were by the city round about and they went by the way of the plain all right and that happened that's when you read that scripture in um psalms where they say race it race it tear it tear it to the foundation of because down even though the babylonians had it surrounded you had edomites out there uh helping the people that was leaving and running but the, you had that famine there, man. You had that famine there, and the men of war was like, fuck it. They left their posts. And when they leave their posts, what happens to the city? The city got spoiled. So during the famine and civil unrest, women, you're going to need a man to protect you. And then you're going to need a man of the Lord because men are going to be getting spoiled themselves. Look at this. You got men in this crowd getting spoiled. Tons of, tons of and then you're talking about great strong men. Exactly. It's not going to be, uh, I'm stronger than this little man over here. No, you might have a little man that know he can't do nothing with the big man, and he just going to give him a weapon or make him a spear or something. All right? He might go make him a, 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 a iron pipe and put spikes on that bitch. All right? And it's just going to be men spoiling one another. All right? For lack of bread. And this is what you see. <laughs> People on the streets in about a thousand. When you, when you, when you, when things like this happen, the people are not sharing with one another, man. These people are not uh, rationing out the food. These food people is getting these bags and taking them to their families, man. That's what they doing. Every everybody for themselves. Every man for themselves, man. All right, this is uh, and and these are the scourges for a minute. All right, this is what the Most High is doing this uh for discipline. All right, and judgment. All right, judgment is a part of the law. This is uh Isaiah fifty one, and verse nineteen, and it reads, "These these two things are come upon uh, come unto thee." Who shall be sorry for thee? Desolation and destruction and the famine and the sword. By whom shall I comfort thee? And the only people the most I is going to comfort is the elect man that's taking heed to his doctrine, that's living his doctrine, that's fasting, that's praying, that's seeking him while he may be found, man. All right? Asking the most high, forgive them of their transgressions in this life and the next, man. This life and in the previous life, Salakia. Okay. Thy sons have fainted. They lie at the head of all the streets as wild bulls in the net. See, when a man is in the mindset of a wild bull in the net, man, he's not worried about other people's lives. All right, D. Men is wicked. Their inventions are wicked, man. If they don't have the bread of life in them, all right, and they, that's what makes you think logical. Okay. These men are going to be no different than a, a, a brute beast, a bull. All right. And they're just going to. Be doing whatever it takes to survive, man. They are full of the fury of Yahweh by Shem Shai, the rebuke of our power. And, the, and that's the thing. The Most High is going to put these demons on them, on people. That's what those four, when you when you read in Revelation, uh, the seventh chapter about those angels holding back the four winds, they're holding back demons, other demons descending on mankind and putting them in a furious mindset, in a reprobate mindset, where they'll be animalistic, where they're going to slay one another, kill kill one another. That's their destruction. Okay? That's their destruction. It's not just the missiles. It's the people destroying and spoiling and killing one another for lack of bread. 
Okay? And these are scored just for a minute. A minute. And this is the law. This is part of the law. Part of the curses, man. Famine, famine is part of the curses. All right? When you read Deuteronomy 28, and our Heavenly Father gave us those uh, blessings and curses, famine and cannibalism is a part of the curses. So our people will be reserving the cannibalism in these last days. These people talking about they love their children, they blessing little babies, so on and so forth. They're going to eat these children, man. This is Deuteronomy 28 and 52. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates. Talking about the so-called white man. Until thy high and fence walls come down. And your high and fence walls is your hood, your neighborhood, where you dwell. All right? He going to come in your shit. He going to come in like a flood. All right? Wherein thou trustest throughout thy gates and land. You trust 911. You trust that the, the work of your hands. You trust in your gun. You trust in white Jesus. All right, he coming. All right, you're going to see if any of those things are going to defend you. And he shall besiege thee in all our gates throughout the land, which the Lord thy power have given thee. And thou shalt eat the fruit of thy own body. That means you're going to eat your children, the flesh of thy sons and of thy daughters, which the Lord thy power have given thee in the siege and in the straightness, wherein thy enemy shall distress thee. All right, and that has happened since we've been a nation. It's going to happen again in these last days, seconds, and times, man. Cannibalism is going to be the thing. People are going to be living off of the remains of other humans, man. All right? And you see the genesis of it right here. Look at all these people. These people on top of these roofs and out there by the multitudes because of lack of bread, man. All right? And this is a precursor of things that's coming to America, man. So with that, Lord willing to sit down, was that a fire to the hearers? I want to give infinite honors to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah by Hashem, and Kakadash, double honors to our teachers, the apostles of Great Millstone, and salutation to my fellow laborers in Yahweh Shah, pushing this truth across the four winds. Kwam Yasharala, Abba, Abba.